me, the most clear example is how the Democrats really care about global warming, or at least they say they, they care a lot about global warming, whereas you feel that the, the Republican Party is much more um, skeptical and, and just uh, doesn't want to do with, uh, doesn't want to get involved with dealing with global warming. So my question to you is how do you defend something like global warming where it's really very obvious how the Democrats are doing the right thing and the majority of Republicans are not? Let me ask you a question if I may. To me, um, global warming is a little bit like um, theism in the sense that it's a factual claim, right? It's a factual claim, moreover, that's not visible to our senses. If you were to tell me, for example, that there is a God and he has these characteristics, um, I might see it or I might not. But it's not like you telling me that, it's, that there's a tree, because I can see a tree, right? You can see the tree. So if I don't see the tree, I have something's wrong with my eyesight, right? But if I don't see God in the way that you see him, it's not, because I don't, I, it's not because I lack eyes. I see the same facts that you do. I just don't agree with your interpretation of evidence that is a little opaque to our senses, right? So here's global warming. My question to you is why is it to you a moral issue? Either the earth is getting hotter or it's not. We don't feel it getting hotter, right? You're looking at one set of data. I'm looking at one set of data. Let's say we disagree over what this data means. We don't disagree about temperatures by themselves, we disagree about the cause of those temperatures and the significance of them and what we should do about them. For example, let's say you were to tell me that in the next room, the temperature is 800 degrees, right? Or let's say the temperature is 110 degrees. I have two choices. I can go in there and say, how do I change the planet to bring the temperature down from 110 to, let's say, a livable 90. Or I can say, maybe I should take off my jacket and try to adapt myself to the climate instead of trying to adapt the world to me. Which is easier? Is it easier for us to adapt to global change that is massive, has been occurring over millennia, and it's very unclear how we can address it? Or is it really worth... So what I'm getting at is, where's the moral issue here? What's, what's moral about it? I mean, the moral consequences of not doing anything about global warming, no? And the people that are supposed to suffer a lot because of not dealing with global warming, especially the poor people in uh, Africa and in many places that are very affected by rising sea levels or lack of vegetation or food. But my question is, Maybe they're wrong, maybe they're wrong, but wouldn't you just would like to bet that they're right for the, you know, don't you think it's m much more beneficial? I mean, obviously it's not for the people that have oil companies, but you and many other people, wouldn't you just want to bet that they're probably right, that most of the scientific community is right about global warming and you want to, you would like to change how we live and change resources? Like, would you just want to bet for that? Well, look, I come from a poor country, India, right? India is trying to go from being a third world country to being a second world country. Now, what this means in terms of human welfare is we're talking about hundreds of millions of people going from starvation to basically having one or two meals a day, right? There, we're not talking about becoming rich. We're talking about a country climbing out of the most degrading type of poverty. They, India cannot do it without energy, without oil, without the, the, essentially the lifeblood of an economy. India and China, the two greatest human success stories in the world in the last 30 years, have come up by massively increasing their demands on world energy. They need it, desperately. Brazilian, poor Brazilians desperately need land and they need farming and they need logs and they need timber and they need paper. 
So these resources are not some world luxury. They're the very basis of the poorest of the poor, the wretched of the earth, climbing up in the world. So it's a complete fallacy to see the global warming debate as between oil companies and, and idealistic environmentalists. That locates the whole debate in the West as if it's just some argument between Exxon and Brandeis. No, that's not where the fight is taking place. Poor countries need stuff to grow. They need food, they need fertilizer. So if you start classifying no fossil fuels, no this, no that, tax on this, tax on that, no oil, uh, the point is you're not hurting the rich guys. I don't care about Exxon. You're actually hurting all these poor people who need this stuff to come up. That's why you'll never see big global warming demonstrations in Mumbai, unless they're staged by the government. They'll, they'll never occur. Just like you never see protests against multinational corporations in Mumbai. You go try and you put up a sign that says Nike and the next day there'll be 500 people standing in line. <laughs> Why? That's, that's the, so so I'm, I'm simply trying to alert you as someone who's grown up on the other side of the world as you apparently have that this is actually a much more complex issue. And so my, it's not that I have a side in global warming. It's not my issue. It's just that when I hear these extravagant claims that, are, that have no empirical experiential support at all, uh, I'm on my guard. That's all I'm saying. Okay, next question.